Okay, this is part two of 2.3, hopefully the last part because that first part was really long. Um, but here we have the variations of the definition of a function. So a function is a relation in which for each distinct value of the first component of ordered pairs, there is exactly one value of the second component. Second, a function is a set of ordered pairs in which no first component is repeated. That's a good one. A function is a rule or correspondence that assigns exactly one range value to each distinct domain value. Okay, so it says function notation. Okay, that's new, right? Function notation. It says when a function f is defined with a rule or an equation using x and y for the independent and dependent variables, we say that y is a function of x. To emphasize that y depends on x, we use the notation that y is the function value as x is plugged in, okay? That's what this means. y is the function value as x is plugged in. Another way to think of it is x is the input, f is the operator, so it's what's happening to the input, and then y is the output. Okay, so that's what these letters represent. So you have to be careful. This does not mean f times x. It means f of x. So what I'm applying a function value, applying an operator to an input, and the result is my output, and the result is called y, okay? So when you have these ordered pairs like this, you have to remember, this guy is the input, this guy is the output. And what process did it go through? That function, okay? It went through that function. Now... It says, note that f of x is just another name for the dependent variable y. It's just a name. And whether I call it f of x or g of x or h of x, all those mean is that there's a different type of operating that's happening as the input changes into an output. Okay? So just remember that it does not mean times. It's of. Okay? You're putting an x value into a function and the result is the y value. So it says here, let f of x equal this expression, let g of x equal that expression, and find the following, okay? So remember, what's in the parentheses is my input. What do I input it into? <laughs> this expression that they have defined for f. So we're going to take negative, negative three squared minus six times negative three plus four. Remember what I mentioned, every time you plug in a value, always put it in parentheses. So here, and if you plug all this in here, negative, negative three squared, just the way it is, you get positive 31. Now be careful with your calculator, there is a difference between a minus sign and a negative sign, okay? So make sure that you're using the correct symbols. This is a negative, negative three squared, oops. And this is a minus six times a negative three. Okay, so make sure that you're typing things in your calculator for correctly. Here, my input is an R. And what am I inputting it into? The F function or the F expression. So here we have negative r squared minus 6 times r plus 4. Well, that's just negative r squared minus 6r plus 4. I cannot combine my like terms. There are no like terms to combine, so this is the answer there. Here, now my input is r plus 2, but into what expression? Into the g expression. So we have 3, and instead of x, we're inputting r plus 2. And I can distribute this, so I get 3r plus 6 plus 1 results in 3r plus 7. 
Here I'm inputting a negative x into the g expression. So 3 and I'm going to plug in a negative x plus 1. That ends up becoming negative 3x plus 1. And these are not like terms so they cannot be combined. So that is the resulting expression. Notice when you plug in just a number, you get a number back out. When you plug in another expression, you're going to end up with another expression, most likely, okay? Same thing here, here's an expression and you ended up with an expression. Here's an expression, you ended up with an expression. A number only, and you ended up with a number only. Now, let's see here, it says, for each function, find f of negative one. So same thing, this is my input, I want to know what is the output and there's my definition of my f so I'm going to input a negative 1 for x and then let's see what we get so we have 2 parentheses negative 1 squared minus 9 and we get negative 7 so we plugged in a number we got a number back out here we still have negative 1 is the input Input, and we're still trying to figure out the output but remember when it's in an ordered pair the input is the first component and the output is the second component right the input is the X the output or the result is the Y so I want to look for a case where negative 1 is my input and I need to figure out what that output is well that happens to fit this point here so that means my answer there is 6. If I plug negative 1 into the function, the output is 6. Now, same thing here, except I have an image. So remember, the input is the x value. So I'm going to be plugging in negative 1. I need to know what the y value is. This one I might need to zoom in a little bit better so you can see. But here is negative 1. Then I would, once I'm at the x value negative one, I would go up to the graph if the graph was up there or I would go down to the graph if the gra graph was down there. But since the graph happens to be right there on top of the x axis, that y value is zero. So my output is zero. And so in function notation, the input was negative one and the output was zero. Now we've got one more thing to consider, one more example and then one more extra um, bit of information. So we don't have to worry about writing functions in the function notation, they'll do that for us, so we're not going to do that topic. The last thing we need to talk about is increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. So. Basically what this means is if you start off with one x value and then the next x value to the right, the y values will get bigger. In the same thing, if you look at one x value and then a second x value to the right of it, the y value is getting smaller. And then here is if you look at one x value and then the next x value to the right, they're actually the same y value, okay? So to decide whether a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant, you ask yourself, what does the y value do as x goes from left to right? Our definition of increasing, decreasing, and constant function behavior applies to open intervals of the domain, not to individual points. So that means we'll be using interval notation and we will never be using a bracket in the interval notation. Always parentheses in interval notation when we're doing increasing, decreasing, and constant. That's different from domain and range. Because in domain and range, if there's a solid dot there or a solid piece of the graph, you put a bracket. For increasing, decreasing, and constant, it doesn't matter if there's a solid point or a solid graph there. You're still going to put a parentheses. So here we have the graph here. Now look, as I trace this, starting from the very left spot, it's going up, up, up. Up, 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 up until it reaches this spot and then it starts to go down, 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 down. What that means is that in this piece of the graph right here, it is increasing because 
traced it, the graph was going up, 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 up. Now, if I transpose this onto the x-axis, I end up with this, which means the interval for increasing is going to be from negative infinity to this x value, which happens to be a negative one. And again, remember, even though there's a solid dot there, you cannot use a bracket. You have to use a parentheses. Now for the next section. So I stopped here, I'm gonna continue from there. And if I trace, I'm going down, 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 down until I get to this spot and then it's going straight. So in this part of the graph, in pink, right, I am decreasing. And what is that interval? If I transpose this part of the graph onto the y, x-axis I get that and if I transpose this bottom part to the x-axis I get this now there's a dot here and there's a dot there so I know that my values start at this value which is negative 1 and then they continue until I get to this x value which is positive 1 and I have to use parentheses and in case that graph is really really tiny too tiny for you let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I was doing there Okay, so increased up to here, right? And that x value is negative one. So it went from negative infinity to negative one. Then the pink area is from this x value, negative one, to this x value, which is positive one. And so that's there with the parentheses. Now we're gonna go to the last section. So from this spot on, it's constant which means in this piece of the graph, if I transpose that onto the x-axis, I get this point here and then a bunch of points and then that arrow. So where is it constant? It is constant from that x value, which was positive one, to arrow going to the right forever is infinity. And then you have to use parentheses on this. So that's what we get for our intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant for this particular problem. Now you'll get different images in your homework assignment, but it's the same thing. When you're doing interval of increasing, decreasing, and constant, make sure that you're using parentheses only, no brackets, regardless that there's solid dots there, okay? And make sure that when you're deciding whether it goes up or down, you're tracing it from the left all the way to the right, okay? And then just segment it into pieces like that if you need to. If you have multiple blue parts where it's increasing in multiple places, all you do is separate the two intervals with a union symbol in between, okay? So that's the end of this section.